meet you. He don't live in his 500 dogs that say see the thousand. Because he tried to get you beyond. He tried. How many of y'all know God is a limitless God? God is a limitless God. So why would he have limit children? Amen. If God is really trying to, listen, God don't want to just bless you. I told you he want to multiply you. You talking about, God, I just want, you know, I just want God to get me an apartment. Amen. See, that's the problem. You're limiting. You, you limit. God said, I got to get you beyond that. I, I, God, listen, I'm telling you, we went to lease a house. Y'all better hear me in the Holy Ghost. We went to lease a house. I said, we're going to move. Let's go ahead and lease this place. I really want to get tired of right now. I'm not sure. Lease house. God said, don't limit. We were looking at the houses. God changed the neighborhood. Literally, we were looking at one place. God sent somebody to said, no, we need to take y'all over here. We'll take us over there. We don't, we're not ready for that. We're going over here. Because in this place, wonderful, wonderful house. God said, I am setting limits. And my limits are not your limits. I got a hundredfold spirit with you. Because you've been faithful. You've been given. And so when the door opened, somebody said, open door, open door. When the door opened, he's able to bless you exceedingly. I wish I had three people right here. Because I'm going to jump off my chair. I'm telling y'all. If I say exceedingly and abundantly, where? 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 Please holler at somebody and say, I'm going to get more than that. I'm getting more than that. I'm being serious. You tell somebody, I'm getting ready to get more than that. Exceedingly and abundantly above all. What? Above what you can think? That's my imagination. Don't do it. Run it away with me. Y'all hear me? I'm telling you. And you got it. And every time God does it, you'll know multiplication. Because multiplication always exceeds what you're thinking. Yes, sir. Come on here, somebody. Yes, sir. I got people in this church right now. I bet I was some over here tonight. They'll tell you they went to the car lot to look at a car, not to buy. We're thinking, our brother, our brother Will got a car. He went to get his car fixed. And Hendrix drove off with a new Jeep. My God. He went in to say, Did you just fix this? And God said, No, I'm going to replace this. Man, for somebody right now that's ready to give God praise, what you trying to fix, God's going to I ain't fooling with y'all. I ain't fooling with y'all. What you trying to fix, God's going to be You done taped it up for the last time. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. You done sewed it up for the last time. God said, I'm going to replace that joker. If you get this right, I'm going to replace what you've been trying to fix. Yes, God. Hallelujah. I feel something new, Alexis. Hallelujah. Let somebody say new, 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 new. I want to feel the new. I want to feel the new. That's what multiplication does. Look, go to Corinthians. I, I got to read this. Get out of here. Look, go to Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. I got to talk early tonight because I got to pack. 9 and 8. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. I got a meet and I take it up. Another meet. Alright, 2 Corinthians 9. That was the moment we've been. We're home. We're back now. Alright, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. Y'all ready? Now, I need y'all to read this for me real loud in KJV, but I'm a holler in, in the Amplified. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. Read it. What's it say? And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. And y'all sound good. And you always have an all sufficient. Come on. And all things may abound to every good work. All right. Here it is in Amplified. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing. Come to you in abundance. Somebody have abundance. So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient. I wish I had somebody. Possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. In other words, everything you need God's going to give you more than enough by you getting the principle of faith and obedience right in his word. It's going to ricochet back to you. Everything. The principle has got to work for you. The favor has got to work for you. Because God has got you in a place of multiplication. Somebody say, God, God is going to make it up to me. I'm telling you, he put the responsibility of giving on you. God's going to make it up to you. God's going to make it up to you. We're going into, I know you, everybody's got something to give. Next week we'll get into everybody's got something to give. But then also we're going to start introducing to you, man, I've got so much, I, I, I'm not even close to my notes yet. Wow. I want to start introducing you all the laws of the harvest. We've got about 12 laws of the harvest that I'm going to teach us. 
who have lost to the office. They have not been looking at them. We're going to be talking about them at home. They should be straight. But I'm telling you, the laws of the harvest, things that have worked for us, things that we know that are in the word, things that are going to bless you. We're going to teach you laws because the laws are immutable. A law just works. And I want to teach you all stuff that just works. The stuff we're teaching you is real life stuff. We don't do anything. Uh, we don't ask you to do anything. We're not already doing it. We live by faith. We live by faith. God blesses us by faith. We live by giving. The principle of giving. I'm telling y'all, God got to give me a whole lot of money because she will give me out of house and home. She just give everything. God, she just give it, just give it, just give it. We can't even do the banquet because she's trying to give me all the tickets. Can't give the tickets. They got to buy them. So we can pay for the banquet. Amen. When you're a giver, it's just in you to give. Right. When you're stingy, it's just in you to be stingy. Right. Wow. You don't want to give nothing. But when you're a giver, you just give. You just give. What? You give a song of my money away tonight, don't you? Give them a little song. I know you are. You got a little song. What do you have? What do you make a comment? Make a comment. Because I, I start coming here with a box. I don't need that song. I, I want to make a comment about uh, St. Corinthians 9. <laughs> Tell me all. Don't watch it. I, I want to make a comment about 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8 first. Because when we talk about you know, cars and houses, being expensive, all those kinds of things. Again, we fight against the carnality um, because I can hear people saying, you know, those are all materialistic blessings and, you know, that's, that's, that's of the world and that's just material things. But it's right here in the scripture that God doesn't mind you in having those things. Um, the scripture said that God is able to make all grace, every favor, an earthly blessing. That's so it. these things you can have. Uh, does it have anything to do with, you know, you're speaking in tongues and you're going to heaven? No, not necessarily. However, you live here in this earth. And so God is saying to you, there are some earthly blessings right. that you can have while you're here. Absolutely. And that's, that's just the Bible. And let, let me say something to y'all. Uh, look at somebody say, stop being deep. Thank you. Address so the truth of the matter is this. God doesn't need a house. God doesn't, God doesn't need a house. You need a house. Excuse me, for the, for the folks that do want to just speak in tongues, can y'all help me here right now? God don't need a ride. God is out now present. He's already everywhere. As for James Spence, he needs to be able to get from A to B. I'm not on that bridge. Come on, y'all. God is not hungry. Y'all ain't gonna help me tonight. God is fine. You in this body need to eat and be spiritual. If you want to, go ahead and go to food. Go ahead, Big D. Don't go to food line. Big D. You go ahead. God wants to speak to our. I don't know why church folks do you. We try to get in church that day. We're so spiritual. God wants to meet our natural needs. Yes, he does. Come on, you know. If y'all would not be spiritual, y'all would tell him, I want to get my head dead, not by somebody who don't know how to do it. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Y'all do that what? I want a, I want a, what is it, a lace, I want a lace weave, I don't want them cheap Y'all ain't saying, all right, y'all go ahead and be deep, all right, you don't want your nails done by somebody practicing. That's right. Oh, I messed that up. <laughs> y'all, I'm going to meet y'all where y'all are. Here, don't be injured me, don't practice, they got me all back here. My hair line all, my hair line all over. Amen. Mother, I need somebody to know what they're doing. They're not going to do it for free. I need to, y'all ain't saying, I want you to pay, I'll pay you, do it right. God don't need a pedicure. He don't need a manicure. You do. Hello, somebody. Amen. God's children will take care of. <laughs> Your children need school clothes. I'm telling you, you know, don't be deep on me tonight. Zariah need a school bag. God need a school bag. Amen. Your kid need college money. Right? Yeah, my kid didn't graduate. God already graduated. He didn't graduate. He has all knowledge. He didn't graduate. So that if my needs are here, why would God speak to something that's not here? The eternal life part is already promised. But he's got to need to, well, I'm going to bless you. Now and then. 